This conversation about building up your blueprint It's time to take it cause time is wasted Go grind and chase it, don't lose it This generation need integration with information to move with An inclination that is abiding and entertaining improvement What's going on? What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Respect My Blueprint podcast. You already know this is your host and your main man, your Blueprint Mastermind. And this is the show where we bring entrepreneurs, movers, and shakers onto the platform. And we hear not only their stories as well as their trials and tribulations, but also the steps they took to be able to build their blueprint. And I have a very special guest on the show. Um... If anybody that's, you know, born and raised in the South Florida area, you know some of these old school classics, right? You know, one of my old school classics that I grew up with, you know, grind on me, I want to, you know what I'm saying? Now, I, y'all remember that, you feel me? And of course, you know, I have one of the pioneers as well as one of the members of the group of that uh, uh, famous song here, which is the one member of the band Pretty Ricky. And we have Big Money Blue in the building. What's going on, brother? How is how you doing today? Hey, what's going on, man? I'm chilling. What's happening? Absolutely. How we feeling today, bro? Feeling good, man. Glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. And of course, we have uh, uh, Giovanni. Os- Giovanni. <laughs> Giovanni. Yeah. Okay. Osiris, baby. Yeah, 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 oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Giovanni Osiris. But you know, as uh, as I see here on the shirt, we've talked about. Uh, uh, Offline here, we're founder as well as CEO of Reentry One, yeah. which is a platform as well as an organization that's helping you know former inmates as well as individuals coming out of incarceration to get reacclimated to society. Yeah. Right, yeah, that's that is correct. Okay. And just to correct the record, so my name is Giovanni Osiris. It's literally mm. my last name is Osiris. Um, but you know, some people call me Osiris because okay. you know because of the a- ancient Egyptian deity being a, you know deity of knowledge and everything like that. But yeah, so um, I'm the founder and executive director of Reentry One. That's beautiful, right. beautiful. So let me obviously we got to start off the conversation. Is you know how did you guys meet? You know where 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 did the connection come about? I mean, I, when I got out of prison, I had to go to a halfway house first. Right. And in the halfway house, you know, they be trying to do little programs for the inmates that's in there. And he came through and he was speaking, but I'm I'm sitting, I'm listening to him, and I'm like, yo, like, dude, talking about some real, I I can cuss, right? Yeah, go ahead. (laughs) Talking about some real (laughs) shit. I'm like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, I'm listening, I'm paying attention. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, we need to spread this message. We need to get him around and move him around. So most of the um, podcasts and interviews that I've been doing that's local, I've been bringing them out so he can spread his message. Beautiful. Most people don't know we all three share something in common, mm-hmm. right? You know, I, I was never a, a singer, oh, by the way, but you know, I've never been <laughs> my bad. You know what I'm saying? Nah. I, you know, I would love to be. You feel me? But nah, you, know, you was just singing <laughs> that shit just a minute ago. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I was, you know, I, I try now. Nah, I try. You feel me? But on the other note, you know, all of us are ex felons, right? All of us have experienced some time being incarcerated, being part of the quote-unquote judicial system and everything like that but all of us you know we recently got out and the beautiful thing is all of us have now found our path our purpose and everything like that and quote-unquote we're building our blueprint right now right so you know i wanted to go ahead and touch on you know how was your time during your incarceration you know because i know when when i did my time obviously you guys came here you know i spent that time to go ahead and plant the seeds of Mm -hmm. you know progression seeds of positivity which ultimately led to manifesting everything we've i've built here right so what were some of the things you guys were thinking and were working on during your time of incarceration behind the gate well i knew right away that go- going into prison i needed to turn the time into something that was positive and something that was going to be beneficial to me so i i kind of like put myself in a mental space of you know, like artists that normally go to another country to write an album to get away from their family and their friends and submerge themselves into a new environment. I did. I, I pretty much mentally did that, and I was like, okay, I'm in prison. I'm away from everybody. I'm, I'm in isolation. Let me take this time to work on myself, to work on my body, my mental. To in prison, we call it getting money. You can't get right. real money, so <laughs> we know that term. term. Yeah, <laughs> you working out? You calling that getting money? Right, so right. I'm in prison. I'm getting money every day. I'm working out. I'm on the track. 
I'm doing 100 burpees a day, but I'm still fat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Stop. I'm big money blue. I'm still big. You feel me? But I realized, you know, I, I read it, I'd rather focus most of my time and my energy on educating myself further, you know, picking up a lot of the books that they had in prison. I, w- I was already well well read before I went to prison, but it was a lot of books around that I, w- I had access to. It. A lot of niggas had right. books and they and they sell, they won't even use them. Hey, let me get that. You tapping in. You trying to build as much as possible. Yeah, I'm building as much as much as possible. I'm 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 building my knowledge and just strengthening my mind. And then in addition to that, you know, I worked on my book, wrote the book. Really? Um, yeah, wrote my whole life story, my family life story, everything. Was this and your first book you ever wrote before? First book. Dope, um, dope. Yeah, I mean, I'm already used to writing since I wrote the albums and shit that in my in my past that was all successful, all platinum and shit. But I, I really wanted to tackle writing a book. And see if I can get a number one bestseller or something like that. And then, in addition to that, I wrote music while I was in there. I just really, right. really just took in the environment and took in um, everything that I've been through over the last couple years and put it all into the music. Because before I went to prison, you know, they tried to rob me. I got what? shot. Yeah, I, I damn. I mean, but died. that's part of the game now. We know that, right? Yeah, that's part yeah. of the game. Yeah. So. I got all that. Then I get indicted. You know what I'm saying? Then I got all the issues that every black man have with their family, family issues, shit like that. So I just put it all in the music, man, and, and, and I'm still going. I'm still working. I still got to record. So now that I'm out, you know, I'm definitely motivated and high performing. You know what I'm saying? I, I know these niggas tired. I know they tired. They tired, man. We probably got Come home. On. We probably got home three, four last night. I'm back up six, seven. I'm back on it. You know hey, what I'm saying? Hold on, man, bro. You got enough haters. You ain't trying to add some more to that body count right now. You talking? You talking hater talk right now, man? It ain't that. It's okay. just I, I'm gonna motivate my team. I'm gonna push everybody. This is the team that that God brought to me and built right. for me. You know what I'm saying? I ain't choose them. This this, this was given to me between him. Ace from Ace Whips, you know what I'm saying? I got Tiffany, I got my manager coming in, Z Mars, like everybody that that's around me is here because they want to be here, and we all motivating and pushing each other. And every single day we get up and we get it, we grind, and we doing what we want to do as far as um, building our brands and furthering furthering our empires, man. Right now I'm working on a few websites for a couple guys. I do e-commerce, you know. I made millions with that shit too. So you know, I'm, I'm just well diversified, man. I got so many streams of income. That you know we we talking that talk cause we, this the blueprint. You feel but me? And, and I really don't f- talk. I don't talk about it. I be about it. Oh shit! Hold on, <laughs> yeah. man. Hold on, goddamn man. I'm the blueprint mastermind now. Come on now. Yeah, but yeah, my name blue though. I put the blue in blueprint. Oh goddamn! <laughs> <laughs> and that's a, and that's a coincidence too. How because I was talking to him, I say, man, that's a coincidence how right. we get here and this the blueprint. You know what I mean? And, you know what I mean? You blue. I'm like, hold up, man. You put damn. this together. Well, you did got, this. And, and, and I let, thought let, I was big dog blue. They don't brought yeah. the big money blue in here. You feel me? Nah, you still big dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, okay. Big dog too. But yo. Last night the building name was blue too. Blue, yeah. So, so last night with the podcast, you know, you know that's what he was saying. We came in like you know uh, early this morning, but I'm looking. I'm like, wait, the building name blue. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's what that's it is. Like, grind don't and then come in here, yeah, that's stop. what I'm saying. Like, but that's a, but that, but that's a sign. That's a sign saying fact, that you're going in the right in the right direction. Right. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Which, so. which leads to my next question, right? Because I know it had to be hard when you take that fall for grace, right? Because you are platinum selling artists and then of course like you say you fell on hard times you know haters come situations happen you end up getting cased up right how was it in there where it's like damn i was huh now i'm dc number how did it how was the actual feeling at that point nah as as crazy as this sound and and you got you know like you said you're gonna have haters niggas might not believe i was excited Stop. Hold on, man. Stop. Come on, bro. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I know. Don't I'm do keep, that, man. I'm going to keep it 100, bro. It's, at the end of the day, I'm going to live my truth. I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to keep right. it a buck. I ain't, ain't no capping. Ain't no me putting no sauce on that. Okay. I was excited, bro. I, I got drove you, up. You got to unpack that for me. I'm going to tell you. I, I got driven up to that motherfucker, right? Because you had to turn yourself in, right? I had to turn myself in. Yeah. I got I got the opportunity to self-surrender. You feel me? Mm-hmm. I got to turn myself in. When I get up there, you feel me? I go to the hotel. I end up fucking another little bit up there. Man, <laughs> I'm too hot. This boy, so you don't clap some cheeks before you got in? I had to. No, man. I, know, I, know I'm, I know I'm doing time. I ain't finna get no p- no more. So, I, I done end up fucking 
Bitch, I don't. Yeah. Shit, hey, motherfucking... that's a sound bite, man. Come make sure you get a clip of that. You feel me? Hey. Go ahead. Hey, man, I got this so motherfucking good. Ooh. Man, I'm talking about, man, she squirted on me. Oh, my goodness. Man, it squirted up the whole motherfucking. <laughs> Room and shit. Uh, I'm like, my right, DM is nah. Blueprint Mastermind, whoever that is out nah, there. You feel me? Nah, 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 don't do it. But yeah, hey, I'm talking about I enjoyed myself. Then I got out to the front of the prison. I'm like, okay, it's going down. Because I really understand that my life is a movie. I'm living this shit. That's what's so up, So I understand when I make moves and shit like that, is I'm making moves that is shit. When somebody watching this motherfucker, they need to be in, at the edge of the seat. Like, what this nigga? Oh, you want to give them something that they came for, pretty much. I got to. I know I'm living a movie. I'm a walking movie, my nigga. I got outside the prison, nigga, the jailhouse pole. What's that, bro? That's not the fake Heisman, bro. What's this? Man, yeah. I did. <laughs> What's that? I, bro, I took the picture and told the girl. I'm like, hey, I'm like, send this to my mom and shit. Tell them what my inmate number is and how to put money on the books and shit like that. Right. True story. I'm right. going to tell you, it, it, it's, it shit got real right here at the beginning. Okay? <laughs> Talk like, to me. As soon as I walk in the door. Hey, take everything off, squat, pick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> cough. Hey, you're bringing memories yeah, back. Yeah, Stop yeah, it, bro. Yeah, We've been, you know we been through intake. We yeah, all been through yeah, intake, yeah, bro. Yeah. Come yeah. on, now. <laughs> so it get real right there. So now, bro, I do the squat, I do the cough. All that, right? So now, it get real. So now, the, the first thing the police nigga say to me, you feel me? He like, you gay? Nah. You got any reason you can't be on the compound? Nah. You a snitch? Nah. Welcome to Coleman, right? Woo! So now, that's it. That's, that's all it. they want to know. Yeah, yeah. So now, you know, welcome me to the prison now. Right. Now, okay, I'm in. I'm acclimating myself. I done came in, right? Now, as soon as I get in, all the all the Miami niggas, all the OG, everybody, they come down, they grace a nigga respect. You know what I'm saying? They come with big, big, big bags of commissary and shit. Now, it's lockdown. It's COVID-19. Ain't mm. no ain't no commissary on the compound in the unit. It, it ain't none of that. Ain't you really come, no movement too much either. Ain't no movement. It's lockdown. Right, ain't, ain't right. Ain't nothing going on. These niggas snuck down and came in <laughs> with bags and shit, man. <laughs> and were like, hey, yo, Blue, this for you, nigga. And they came, nigga. They gave me everything you could think of. This off the love. Just your face being who you man. are. That's yeah, it. Real. Yeah, just face clean out of respect for each other. And we, and we all from Miami and shit like bet, that. Bet, so, bump. They bring me everything I need, Toothbrushes, toothpaste, commissary for day. Ain't, ain't nobody else got shit. I'm in that motherfucker. Got everything. I, I got so much shit. I could open a stove. Oh, but, you know, I'm, man. I'm but I'm, I'm the type of <laughs> spread love. So some niggas that I fuck with, I gave some stuff to. You know what okay. I'm saying? And I made sure I was straight. But this way it get real at. Talk so now you. niggas trying to give me the phone off real. They like, blue. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on. You know, hold on. That's a whole other case right now. You mean yeah, off. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had to wait at least a year to get my pipe. Golly, you get it first quarter? First day. This the best, man. First, first day. Best. Nigga like, hey, yo, Blue, here go a phone. You need to call your family? Shit. Nah, I ain't trying. I'm trying to get out this motherfucker. <laughs> right? So I hold this shit off. Right. I hold it on, 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 hold it on. Right? I finally say, all right, fuck it. I'm going to jump on the phone. This is about two or three months later. Okay? Okay. When I get the motherfucking phone. And I start calling motherfuckers. Motherfuckers like, yo, you know what happened? Nah, what happened? First day you, you went to prison, your mama did a group text with all your bitches. She put all the bitches in the group text and was like, yo, this is his, this is his <laughs> inmate number. So he need money on his books. And them bitches start fighting, group texting each other, FaceTiming, cussing each other out, sending tattoos back to each other. All kind of crazy shit. Ooh. Hey, I jumped out of prison with no. B <laughs> a whole, I had to get a whole new setup. You feel what I'm saying? And then I'm like, man, you know what I'm finna do? I'm finna go ahead and settle down. I got one that I really f with that that's really solid. And I feel like one thing that I learned from from prison is you need that motherfucker that's gonna hold you down. You need somebody yes. on the outside yeah. that's yes. gonna put money on your books. Yeah. You need somebody Big on the facts. outside that's yeah. gonna. Run errands for you. Take yeah. care of things that you need done. You know what I'm saying? You you might be spending your own money, but you ain't got access to it. You need somebody right. to handle, handle that could shit. be able to transfer things and do things for you on the outside. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I just I just learned that, man. You gotta have that one person that's in your corner that you are gonna go hard for, and because you are going hard for this person, they gonna reciprocate your energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got that person right now that I feel like I love. I love the motherfucking death. Now I'm in the music business. This shit don't never last. Guys. Oh, they got to understand. Oh, okay. so in, in, in other words, that's the disclaimer. You got to understand what comes with it, right? Yeah, it never lasts. But okay. I, but I love this motherfucker.
Yeah, yeah, now I really, I'm really finna see how it go. That's you feel me? Up. That's what's up, man. Yeah, you know what's so, up? So you was living like a like you was living like a king up in the behind the walls, and you can man, safe to say, man. Listen, man, for a lot of niggas in prison, you feel me? I, I tell them this all the time, dog, because motherfuckers in there complaining. They be like, man, they ready to get out. I'm like, I was living, I was living top notch out here. You know what I'm saying? The, the best you can do it, right? In prison, bro. If you set yourself up the right way, and you got a little paper, man. You gonna have a nigga washing your shoes, washing your drawers, making yeah. your bed. But most me? important, you also go be able to make a way to make money for you to be set up on the outside. Yeah, you can do all period that from right. prison. You right. can do all that. My right. nigga, I was making a thousand a day, nigga, playing poker in that motherfucker. God, hold yeah. on, man. God, that bluff game strong like that. Uh, I don't bluff. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I got okay. it. All right, I got it. You know, you know what they call me? What's that? Blue balls, cause blue got the nuts. Shit. <laughs> hey, I got Shit. it. Shit. Just know that it all flats. Ma all, all flats. 30, 40 flats on me at all times. God. You know what? Uh, you know what? Hold on, man. God. Uh, listen. Listen, boy. Listen, man. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, big money. Now, God and you got to tell them what uh, that mean, too. God when damn, you say big flats, money. You got to tell oh, them what flats. that mean. Yeah. 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 A flat is a book of stamps that you're really supposed to use the mail. To mail things mail out. Like. Right. Right. But in prison, that's that. the book of flats is your money. It's worth $7. You know what I'm saying? 30 of them motherfuckers. Twelve hundred dollars. See, all. They, they, they don't know about. They don't know about. Listen, they don't know about all that's that. That's the chain game. They currency. don't know about all that. They don't know what you know. <laughs> things they don't appreciate in here. That ramen noodles and uh, and and the tunas and uh, you know what I'm saying man, stuff now, like that. All that's 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 cash money in there. You gotta you have me? that, man. Every every you listen. Me? I gotta cook on on payroll, man. He gonna bring the food out the kitchen. Man, I, stop I'm playing, eating, man. Bro. I'm dead serious, man. I gotta cook. I gotta cook. That's bringing salad with chicken breast. I got another cook that's bringing the fried chicken, and then on Wednesday is chicken patty day. I'm getting the, the chicken tenders in that motherfucker. Boy, you living like Flanagan's up That's in there, man. To do the burpees to keep it going, man. Just to, yeah, I can see why you had to do 100 now. burpees man, a day then. Hey, now. I'm eating good. I'm still fat. <laughs> eating that motherfucker. Because you know what? You got to understand, man. It's all about your mental, bro. If I right. would have let that motherfucker just break me and just be in there moping around Big and shit. Facts. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying I to like live that. how I live on the outside, man. Yeah. There's some new shoes come in on the compound that they done stole. Man, let me buy those, man. What let you want? Let, they want 200 They For a, for a G-Shock watch, the plastic one. That yeah, yeah, yeah. $15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That bitch $15 in the streets. In prison, that bitch $500. 500 yeah. yeah. Cell phone, $5,000. <laughs> $2,500 at the um, at the low. 500 at the camp for a phone. I'm talking about the Android that come out of Walmart. That's $15. That, that is bitch $5. Oh, no, ain't no Apple phones because that's special charges. Ain't no charges uh, up in there. I had one of them, too. Ring it up a light or something like I that. I had one of them me? FaceTime, baby. It, 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 we had all that shit I was at, God damn it. Yeah. We drinking liquor that's out the, the bottles. Everything, man. Wait, ain't no buck. Man, they got liquors out, liquor. Nah, they got that at the low, but okay. at the at the camp where I started at, man, we got big lick in that motherfucker. You know what? Hold on, man. You know what? We ain't gonna tell this turn this into a prison story, <laughs> y'all. Cause yeah. a lot, uh, you right now, a, a lot of viewers left, but a lot of viewers came. as the ex cons right now. They be like, oh yeah, this is the type of shit you talk about. You feel me? But you yeah. know what I want to get into, right? Let me hit the disclaimer before go you ahead, do that. Go ahead, go ahead. Hit the disclaimer then. We ain't glorifying prison. No, we not, but we just I have a bigger about, point to make about that. Right, right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But go ahead. Yeah, we ain't glorifying prison. We just want everybody to understand that it's a whole nother world in there. Mm -hmm. It's a whole yeah. nother realm. It's a world within a world. It's a world within the yes, world. And yes. niggas surviving, and we really need the people on the outside. When a nigga hit you and say they need money on their books, them $30, them $40 for commissary, man, they need that for real. Yeah. A uh, nigga ain't eating. You know Absolutely, what I'm saying? So, because when I did, you know, when I did my time, you know, I was a law clerk. Okay, that was my hustle. I'll be honest with you. You know, what I'm saying I ended up getting myself back into court, right, and giving oh, some man. time back. Okay. And I just became a law clerk because, you know, long story short, which I shared with you guys, and of course, the audience have no, no, well known about this. You know, I did almost a decade and everything like that. All white collar offenses. Got out October, then you know pandemic came i had to go ahead and do my one two of course to build up what i had to not right but the nine years that when i was in there i was like when i first got sentenced most people don't know about this i actually opened plea to my judge i thought i was going home that day she mm. went ahead and gave yeah. me 120 months Damn. right so when i get in the intake like you say the squat cough and all that good shit and everything right so that whole time it still hasn't hit me that damn i'm about to do 120 months in prison yeah, yeah. it didn't hit me yeah. then my first job was 
uh, um, you know, with the job they give everybody, cut inside grounds, oh, inside cutting the ground. grass and everything oh, like okay. that, right? So I did inside grounds, and then the I worked in the you kitchen. Had the long yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Flintstones. You think they're to give you anything powered? Yeah, 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 no, you get yeah, Flintstones, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So I did the kitchen. I'm like, hell no. Nah. After about four months, I said, no, I gotta find a way to get up out of here. I can't. I'm not breaking out. Nah. But I still got to find a way out of here. So I became a law clerk, right? So I became a law clerk. Not only was I able to go ahead and find a way to get myself, but that was my hustle as well. Because any true boss that's on the streets, you're going to find a way to eat inside prison. Yeah. So, right? So that was my one-two hit for people with their DRs and getting them back in the court and everything like that. Give it time back, right? So, and I say that just to piggyback off what you said, right? Because, listen, if you are somebody who are used to not getting it, waiting to somebody to give, you know, waiting for a nine to five paycheck, waiting for somebody to go ahead and dictate your future. When you get into prison, you're going to have that same mentality. You're going to rock like that. Right. But if you've been a true boss like we have been on the streets prior to then, true. when you hit the pound, you are already going to find some way somehow to be able to eat that energy is automatically going to attract to you. Right. Yeah. So. I could definitely So I just said that For everybody To further emphasize On the point We're not glorifying prison We're just glorifying The character Of the individual Right Because obviously As he was Big money blue Before he went To the chain gang Doesn't mean That he can't be Big money blue While inside the chain gang Obviously right yeah. And they you gave know. me That name In the chain gang God damn it What Yeah they gave me That motherfucking name so, so wait a minute. So now, if I'm not mistaken, you only did what? About a couple of years, right? About two, three years? I did one year. To the one year. Door. Okay. So you did yeah. one year. So you knew you had one year to, you, you have one year to do. All right. D did you plan out what you were going to do when you get out while you was in there? Or you was just like, I know you said you read books, you, you built relationship capital, you met, you know, uh, uh, Osiris here, right? Giovanni. I'm sorry. Giovanni here. And you. You know, you built contacts, relationships, and everything like. But has that been your game plan ever since day one, or it just came about you during your time in there? Nah, man. Where I was locked up at, man, there was so many motherfuckers in there that got locked up for a hundred million, two hundred million, three hundred million, and they just gave me all these fucking stories of how they they made it from nothing, and then the government came in and just wiped them out, took their money. You know, basically took a pillar out the community. They they feed and they family and all of their friends, and they wiped them out. And now they just made a whole community suffer. And I heard this story over and over and over again. Are you from serious? It, man, I'm serious, man. I'm talking about strong motherfuckers. And this ain't some of them was um that was enough for for drugs. But a lot of these people were white collar crime. Right. The ones who went up for drugs, man, they did them wrong too. I'm talking about they could find them with a brick of heroin, or maybe not even a whole brick. They you literally could catch. Let's say, for example, they put a, a, a CI on a nigga who, who they think is selling work. And right. the CI buy a dime bag from that motherfucker. Any, of, any testimony that they might have got that said, oh, yeah, he sell bricks, now it validated. So now they hit him with everything. Then if he, if he own a firearm... At his Ooh, house Arm trafficking now Yeah right. Now right. enhancements Yeah, yeah they, time. they hit yeah. him with an enhancement For just owning a gun And saying that he's protecting the dope With the gun Even though the gun ain't on him The gun might be at the house Under a pillow or something But you own a gun You protecting the dope With the gun So now They give him a five year enhancement Or whatever They getting these niggas Elbows That what we call Life sentences in prison So I mean I heard these stories So many times I was like man When I get out I gotta spread awareness Because Before I went to prison I never thought about this having this conversation. It, it nobody really have it. I seen Meek Mill have it a few times. Right with the prison reform he, he and everything. To do it, yeah, but, but he need help. Like he need more people that that can bring awareness to it. That got platforms like we got that can spread awareness and let people know. Like, hey, man, the government is really doing everything in their power, man, to increase their numbers to lock up minorities, to lock up people in prison and just put a number on us, man. And now they got legal slavery in prison. They real literally talk. don't even them. wow, real I talk. like that. That's real talk yeah. though. Man, That's real talk. They literally paying these dudes twenty three cents for a day. A day yeah. to go and work and do manual labor and these people got family on the outside. Like why you can't pay them minimum wage like a normal person get so they can still handle their responsibilities from prison. You know what I'm saying? Wow, it, big facts. It, it move, yeah, and move like that, that money out. They can't use the money on the inside. Give them, put it on the check. You're only allowed to use so much on, on the inside. The rest of that is to fulfill your obligations, to pay restitution, to pay child support. Your family, right. to whatever get, the to case. To take care yeah, of your family. Anything, man. That's a good point. Not 23 cents. That's crazy. What and can, then, yeah, and like, then also to interject also, right, so 
in the state, majority of the people in the state, like, you know, you work inside ground, outside ground, DOT, public works, like right. I did, they don't pay you nothing. No 23 cent, no one cent. They don't even pay you attention. They don't even pay you no mind. <laughs> yeah, and so, so, you know, and I and like I did that for six years, the last six years of my time in, in prison, mm-hmm. and then get out and have to take care of myself. So what that make math at, right? And, and it's hard when you get out. It's so it's hard. It's already yeah. hard just by having that prison number, period. When right. you period. Get out. It's period. hard. Man, these dudes get out, man, they ain't got nowhere to live. They ain't got no source of income. No support. They got no support. They got, you got it, you got, when you apply for a crib, you got to have first, last security, and you got to show proof of income. For they ain't got years. no proof of income. Yeah. And they're always going to ask you, of course, what's your background, and of course, if you have certain charges, they you just automatically, yeah, you, you can have them. every box checked, but if you have that one box that, if it's violent or something they don't like, boom, Just, just answer the question. How do you get a crib with no proof of income? You've been in prison. How can you prove your income? You know what I'm saying? Wow, I even it's hard. It's like okay. it's so it's so many challenges that a person coming out of prison has. That you know, I mean, I'm fortunate to be in my situation, but I know a lot of other people that I can empathize with. Right. That I'm like, damn, like look at all the shit that they're going through. Which is why I I gotta support this guy because yeah. he provides clothing for him, food for him, shelter for him, a anything lot, that, that he the do system homes. is not giving it took away from him, right? Well, yeah, man, yeah. he got a system set up that, and, and I want him to give his website in a minute, but um. Hey, get your website right now, man. Yeah, www.reentry1.org. That's www.reentryone.org. That's any That's anybody that you know that 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 been to prison that need help, tell them go to his website and get help. They anything that that they might need, he gonna have the offer. You know what I'm saying? But you the question the question was, did I plan all this shit right before? And uh, I went in with a plan that I wanted to um, make a make my life better. I wanted to change my life. That was right. the that was the the focus. That was the purpose, right? Right. But I didn't at exactly know exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm still in. The, I'm writing my book. I'm trying to turn my time into something productive and right. work on my book every day. Man, they catch me with the motherfucking phone in my cell right ah, in the book. Shakedown. Shakedown. When yeah. they catch me with the phone, you know what I'm saying? They catch me with the motherfucking... And that's a funny story, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? That's a you funny know this, you know this story. story. I, already, I already know how he you tells know the story. You know the story. Okay, he's okay, a, he's okay. A good storyteller. <laughs> Man, let me tell you, right? Uh, talk to so, me. So, I'm in this motherfucker. I'm making the stack of day playing cards and shit like that. You feel me? We got our own little poker room and shit. Everybody from the whole compound come in and, you know, the, the big... With the with the plats with the money, oh, okay, you know what I'm we, okay. We we kill our time with that. A, a game of poker gonna go. It's gonna kill your whole day. So your day is flying, months yeah. flying. You feel me? You just enjoying yourself, right? The Mexicans cook the food. They cook the chicken wraps. They cook the, the burritos. Yeah, and they bring it to you like a restaurant. They bring that <laughs> motherfucker in. Man, Ooh. stop so, it, bro. <laughs> yeah. So one of the motherfucking Mexicans that bring the food in this this nigga real motherfucker heavyweight on the outside. I'm talking about he got caught with like 300 bricks in the tractor trailer, right? Mm. So he he do some of the food, right? So he bring the food in and shit. So I, I got acquainted with him from bringing in the food. Right. So he like, man, Blue, you got to come hang out with me, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, no problem. I'll come hang out with you in the Vatos Locos. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come hang out with my okay, dog. Okay, okay. You know? so, <laughs> so I go hang out with him. I'm in mean, their cell. They end up um frying up some motherfuckers. Fajitas or something with the Did iron. Did you say fry with the iron? Like in that bitch with that bitch. Man. With the iron. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> they making this shit right. So they making. I'm talking about nigga. We in prison, bro. You know what I'm saying? You gonna eat this shit? It's respect amongst brothers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Nigga frying that bitch up. I'm with my Mexican brother. We eating fajitas stretch, fresh off the iron. You know what I'm <laughs> and I'm talking about they been slapping. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's cheese on it's it. It's pork on yeah. it. It's, it's fucking corn and it's the some pickles, shit. all that shit. All that shit in that motherfucker. Okay, okay. We eating that shit and sipping Mountain Dews and shit. <laughs> so I'm in there chilling and shit. We eating this shit. Right. So I done became acquainted with him. So now I'm back in. I'm back in my cell and. Now, and, and where I'm at, you feel what I'm saying? I'm on a block. We all those Miami niggas on the same block. 
Okay. So like they understand that I don't want to be bothered. I kind of want to be in there by myself and work on my book and. You know, I got carpet in my motherfucking cell. You know what I'm saying? Don't nobody else got carpet in their shit. Hello, bro. I don't want a nigga walking in my shit. I'm walking barefooted in my shit. How you feel me? get carpet in this? Uh, this dude's living uh, better than Martha Stewart in there, bro. What we got saying. going on, man? But hey, come on. I just put it together like that. You feel right, me? Right, okay. So I, I, I like to walk barefooted in my cell and, and focus and have energy. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So. I'm Don't tell me you had book. some sage blowing up in there too, man. Uh, yeah. Nah, but we in there, we got hookahs and shit like that. All that shit blowing. <laughs> right? So, <All> right. <laughs> so one day, I, they, they know I don't want nobody in my cell. Right. But Mexican dog come to me. He like, Blue. He like, man, I need somewhere. They put, they put a guy in your cell, and I know you don't want nobody in here. I need you to just let him stay for a day. Let him stay for a day? Yeah. A day? Okay. What's a day? A day. Fuck All right. It. Man, this motherfucker. In my cell, this nigga El Chapo, my nigga. I ain't gonna say everything that's going on because we can't really speak Hold on, on this man. shit. Hold on, man. Wait, wait a minute. Did you just drop an exclusive? Hold on, bro. Uh, hey, man, they put El Chapo in this motherfucker. This nigga like the kick the head of the black hand or some shit. Like some crazy shit. Some big boss that you probably ain't never met, that never known of before that day. Nah, nah. Never known no, right? So I right. ain't tripping. I, I, but he cool as fuck. He get down with the get down. And I got a lot of... Going on, I got a phone in that bitch. I got an electronic toothbrush in that bitch. That's oh, like, hell, oh, <laughs> hell. No. Hey, having an electronic toothbrush, Boy, that's automatically up. to the box. DR to the box, ship Transfer. you to another pound. Yeah, yeah that's like having right. a shank in that Right, right, right. Right, right. right. So I got all kind of shit in my cell that nigga, I got mouthwash, nigga. I got Listerine in that motherfucker. Hold you know? on. Oh, what you uh, just wanted to be Mr. Dentist <laughs> or something? What you got? <laughs> I wanted to make sure my motherfucking mouth will stay right so when I get out, I can still kiss a bitch. Is right. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, not wrong so, with that. You know, a lot of y'all brothers take note of that, yeah, okay? No, but no, go no, ahead. No. So, yeah, I, I'm real big on dental hygiene and shit like that. You see the diamonds. Ooh! <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, man, they put a motherfucker off that nigga myself now. So now we in there kicking this shit, but this nigga's paranoid as fuck. Because you got all this Croucher band in there. Man, I'm on the phone every day. I'm on FaceTime all day and shit. This nigga's like, Blue, you're going to get caught with the phone. <laughs> Who's gonna get caught with the phone? I'm like, man, chill out, man. Now this nigga got all kind of shit going on too. You know, you what would man? think like, we ain't gonna speak on. Yeah. But, hey, this nigga's like, blue. You gonna get caught? I'm like, yo, don't speak the negative energy on me, man. I'm positive energy, positive vibes only. You know, I don't attract negative energy. I don't speak. I'm never getting caught with the phone. Absolutely. Don't you see the carpet on the floor, sir? Right. That's yeah. what I would have said. I'm, to go nowhere. <laughs> I'm never getting caught. Yeah. Yo. It's the middle of the night. It's about it's about eleven. Wait, but you get a phone call? Actually, somebody calling you? Somebody calling him? Oh, they calling his phone? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold they on. Call, <laughs> they call, <laughs> they call, hold on. Yeah. That's the man that told you. Exactly. To that's what phone. I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Right. Hold on. They calling this phone. So now, yo, they coming. What? Oh, it's time to talk now. Go ahead and try. The whole prison, everybody in this bitch took his shit. We put shit up, right? So now he said they coming, but they don't never come. False call? False call. Fall asleep. Ooh. I'm knocked out. About an hour later. Do, 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 do. They coming. They coming. Uh. Soon as the police get by my motherfucking door, the phone start no. ringing. Matt, hold my phone this time. No. My phone. My phone started motherfucking ringing. That nigga was like Jason at the door. Where the phone at? <laughs> <laughs> that nigga funny. Yo, hey, I, I, yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> I had enough time to throw that bitch in the common area and nobody would have got fucked up by the phone, but it, it Wait, happened. wait, you was in the open bay or it was a uh, two man cell? I could have thrown it. Yeah, two man in there. Okay. I could have threw it like where the bathroom was. Oh, you feel what I'm saying? Okay, okay, so okay. Now, so now I'm like, fuck. He done caught me with it. He like, where the phone at? So I hit that bitch in the bed. Get up out the bed. So I done jumped up. He go. That nigga did that bitch like a dog. <laughs> Bout the phone instantly. Boom. Damn. I like, damn, I'm fucked. So now when he find the phone, that nigga look at the he Chico. He take cuff up? Nigga, no, nigga. He look at the Chico like, where your phone at? <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. I'm like, no. I'm like, yo. I'm like, no. Are you <laughs> serious? Yeah. I'm like, yo, he got a charger. It was it, this my phone. I got the only phone. Yeah, because you know it's a separate charge yeah, right, for the right, charger right. And, and the, the phone. phone. Right, yeah. right, so right. I give him the charger. I give him the phone. Like, he ain't got nothing, man. It's just me. Let's go, man. Then all my Puerto Ricans come from the back. They like, nah, nah, man, don't take them. We're gonna give you five phones for blue. Five phones. Don't Damn. don't take them, man. That nigga no, say, oh, are you serious? Up. Man, that's the Pope, the Pope, yeah, they, they tried to hold me down, man. They were real gangster about it. They're like, we give up. you five phones for blue. You know, nigga, that's like 20,000. For real? Hell yeah. Right? So, nigga, they, they, he's like, um, nah, f 
them phones? Who finna go to the hole for them? Who going to the shoe? Oh, they wanted somebody to go down. The police wanted a nigga to go to the shoe for the shit. Right. So then my, my dog looking at me, you know what I'm saying? He top shot call a nigga, Miami nigga. He look at me like, all you want me to do is get a nod, like, and he going to go. I'm like, nah, man, I ain't going to do it. I look at him like, man, take me, man. Fuck it. Cut, <laughs> cut me up, man. Let's go. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel me? Let me get the experience of the shoe. Oh, Fuck it. No. Let me go to the hole, nigga. Fuck it. Oh, you oh, feel me? Here we go. go. Hey, so a nigga. Yo, so now I tell the nigga he like he like, hey, I could pack you out, or and you ain't gonna get your shit, but you could pack your own shit. All right, man, we gonna pack. So now a nigga packing the shit, shit. I tell the nigga, hey, man, y'all can have all this shit. I'm loaded. I got commissary every, here, take man. It. I got commissary for days. You see my picture on Instagram? I nigga? seen it now. Yeah. I got commissary for days. Man, you I, making some nigga to go in the chain yeah. gang after yeah. that picture? But <laughs> come on, Jack now. Mac falling all yeah, on the ground. Like, the God, all all so I tell the. I say I got I got contraband I got phones I got I got all kind of shit you ain't even supposed to have in prison, bro. I got fruity pebbles, nigga. You ain't supposed to have no fruity pebbles in that bitch, <laughs> bro. Got, are you bro, dead serious, bro? You had uh, somebody sneaking fruity pebbles, fruity bro? pebbles, nigga. I nigga sneak crab legs and lobster, nigga, with cheddar biscuits from Red Lobster, nigga. Did, uh, oh, oh hell, oh hell, hey. no. oh, you know what? God, <laughs> damn, God. Hold on, man. The cheddar biscuits. Hold on, man. <laughs> hey, but damn, he don't hit a weak spot right there. <laughs> Now when you going out there, yeah, you feel me? He done made you hungry. They're right? like, damn. Hey, <laughs> in the hey. chain game. So I tell the niggas, I say, take everything. Nah, blue wind. No, nigga, take everything. So now the nigga like, let's go. So now I go down. They take me downstairs. I'm cuffed up. All right. Man, why these niggas come with all the bags of the shit anyway? Like, they don't want to do me like that. They're like, man, we ain't taking your shit, blue. They bring me all the bags with all the contraband in it, nigga. Everything in there. Stop I'm like, it. I'm like, bitch, I'm never getting oh, down. <laughs> Stop hey, it. They get, they brought everything down there, right? So now the police like, um, he like, he like, you want, you want your, your property? I like, nah, I don't want none of that shit. I just want my book. Like, that's my, it. Oh, that you've been working on. Right, right. I said, I just want my book. Man, let's go. So now they take me to the higher security prison. So now they take you off the pound. They take me off the pound. They take me to another another higher security prison in the same compound. Oh, in the same compound. Yeah, because okay, Coleman okay. is the biggest compound in America. Oh, prison. I never knew that. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So now they take me to the higher security prison. They take me through. Same shit. Cough, squat, boom. Throw this orange shit on. You're going to the shoe. Isolation. Can't talk to nobody. All this shit, right? So now I'm like, damn, I need my motherfucker. Manuscript. So now I'm writing the cop out like, hey, I need the manuscript. Man, I'm going crazy in this bitch. I need a book. Give me a book, please. They, they don't they ain't reply. Man, give me a Bible. They ain't reply. Man, give me a Quran. Something. Oh, wow. man. Yeah. Hey. Let me just get a notebook with a pen. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> right. Man, I'm writing with a rubber. The pencil is a rubber pencil, bitch. When you writing that motherfucker bending, nigga. I'm like, yeah, you know, oh, because the, they the yeah, box. they don't yeah, want to give you nothing pen. that they can hurt yourself right. or nothing like that. Yeah. Right. So nigga, I'm like, let me get a Quran. When I say let me get a Quran, nigga, they they got themselves together. Then they, they, not a post. That's crazy. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. So not bro, a they don't play about the Muslims. The Muslims. I tell you that right now. Work for that Quran. What? Stop playing, man. This nigga. Police come down. First of all, he walked down the motherfucking hallway singing pretty rigged with a speaker on. <laughs> so now Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nigga. What? So now everybody in the fucking hallway going crazy. Oh, oh that nigga back here blue back in his yeah. face. Right. So they going crazy. Then there's always one nigga. Is one nigga at the end of the hallway, y'all groupy ass niggas. <laughs> <laughs> right? So now this no, nigga call man. everybody a motherfucking groupie. Start snapping this shit, right? They feelings now. Get your pussy ass off the dough, nigga. Like that, that what they do. They talk shit. They right, get on the right. dough. Fuck, nigga. Get off the dough, nigga. You a bitch, nigga. You a paper soldier, nigga. <laughs> nigga, you fold up like paper pussy, nigga. Like they talk shit on the dough, right? Right. So now the police get back there. This nigga say, hey, man, you going to stop writing them cop outs. You going to stop writing cop outs. You know who I am? I'm the nigga in a fight with Loon, nigga. You know who Loon is? Yeah. Talking about the rapper Loon? The, the rapper. He like, I'm the one got in a fight with Loon. Nigga, I air your ass out of this motherfucker. Keep right. I say, I just want a Bible and a Quran. That nigga say, you going to start writing the cop-outs? Yes. I think about it. Nigga, oh, yeah. No man. choice at that point. Yeah. He brought the Bible and the Quran, but then the motherfucker stopped feeding me. They stopped bringing food. Them niggas get to all the way to the end of the hall. They get to my shit and be like, Oh, we forgot. We ran out. We forgot your food, bro. We forgot. We gonna get to you. And they'll, they'll do me like that, nigga, for days, nigga. No food. Hey. So now, the same nigga who like, man, y'all niggas some groupie niggas. 
Did man, just feed that nigga, man. Bring that nigga some food. Now he's my best friend. Now he your supporter now. He my supporter now. Cause yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. like, man, that's fucked up what y'all doing to my dog. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to that nigga. That's BG. You know BG. <laughs> BG, if you're watching this show, man, you a real one now. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of real ones out here, but I can't say you a real one, okay? Yeah, you BG, feel me? Yeah, we die. Then we start doing burpees yeah. behind the door and that shit. You know what I'm saying? We'll count them out of shit. And do the burpee. We in the hole, bro. Literally to get some shit in your cell, we gotta make like a little, like a little, little shit on a piece of string, nigga. And throw that bitch under it's the a door. Kite. Yeah, throwing a kite, right? Yeah, 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 when yeah. we throw that bitch under the door, it's a shame. I know all this stuff right here, man. God. <laughs> I'm three years removed from the chain gang. Yeah. All the guy I leave, boy. They say you don't <laughs> never forget it. They say you don't never forget you it. Never man. Forget you never it. forget it. That is true. You you have to keep it in your mind so it lets you know, okay, what not to go back to as well, too. You feel me? But yeah, yeah. go ahead. Man, I hear motherfuckers be like, man, you only did a year in prison. You do a year. Woo! Let me, let me say see, it again. Let me see you do a year. Yes. Let me, let me see you go in that yes. motherfucker and make it out without a scratch. Let me see you go in there and survive. Let me see you go in there and take care of your family from the outside, nigga. I'm paying my mama rent from prison. Because you know? that's, and I'm glad you highlight that because, you know, just to piggyback off the story here, and we're going to, you know, really build on this topic because, you know, prison is a world inside of a world, right? Yeah. And most, like you say, most people don't realize that, you know, we behind gates, we need, we have responsibilities. You got to buy bleach, you got to buy soap, yeah. you got to find entertainment, you got to not only. B- Take care of all of that, but be a man because as men, we're protectors and providers. So we got to provide for ourselves and find a way to provide for the outside. Right? Absolutely. And I want to, yeah, I want to go ahead and, and if highlight some of the uh, you guys, some of the experiences you've been through, right, and everything, right. And now that you guys are out, you guys are on a mission now to change the narrative as far as when it comes to you know ex felons and everything like that, Absolutely. and and definitely right, and. I want to know, you know, as far as this narr- the, the narrative and the purpose that you guys are building right now, you know, is it based upon the experience that you've been through in prison or is this is just something that you see based upon what the entire culture is going through, right? Because just before you answer that question, right, you guys know my story. Again, I came out, I had the same mentality as you guys when it was in there. I was like, I'm going to do whatever it takes to not put myself back in and everything. So, you know, I'm going to start off with you, Osiris, because I definitely want to hear from you. You know, you know, was your experience in the chain gang is the reason what led to you building your platform currently right now? Absolutely, positively. Uh, you know, I went in young, man. So I was 21 years old when I man, got arrested. Young man. Yeah, 21 years old. They sentenced me to 20 years drug trafficking. Uh, and 20, bro, yeah. that, that yeah. 20 to the dope. Oh, yeah. To take two decades out of a man's life yeah. for trying to take care of himself is yeah. asinine. But go ahead. Bro. Yeah. So I got I got knocked off with a brick um, of cocaine. So, uh, you know, so they gave me 20 years, which is essentially. The same amount of time is just one year shy of how, you know, my age. That's Um, ridiculous. And even though I went to trial and I was acquitted on the the primary offenses, Mm -hmm. they gave me more time for the lesser offenses than they did for the primary offenses. Was that your first time going to prison? Absolutely. That was my first first, uh, uh, offense. That was my first actual criminal offense. You know, I had never been convicted prior to that. Uh, And so, um, but you know. Yeah, cause so you know what it is. It's just that you know I sat in I sat in the county jail three years fighting, fighting. the case. Right. Um, I fought for. I had an Arthur hearing, um, uh, and then you know they actually um, denied the Arthur hearing. My attorney appealed it, and then uh, you know they approved the, the Arthur hearing. The judge granted it, and then they came back uh, within twenty four hours and they snatched my bond. Because uh, the thing is, is that I was actually arrested by the DEA. So this started as a federal investigation, right. and they eventually took me to um, to court in the state, in the state courts, because I was looking at more time in the state court versus, versus the feds. Right. And the whole their whole idea was to get me to to testify, right? To get me to tell on somebody because right. I had two other co-defendants, and one of my co-defendants testified against me. I got set up. Long story short. Um, you know, I get sentenced to the 20 years, even though I was acquitted of the primary offenses because they offered me 15 years, right, as a plea agreement. Uh, but that was on my first day of trial, three years after I hadn't been arrested. And mind you, I ain't got no bond. So I was acquitted on both counts of the uh, of the primary offenses, got found guilty of the lesser included offenses, and they gave me more time 
for the for the lesser charges than they did for the primary offenses because I wouldn't take the plea to testify against, you know, people I mean, in the community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Make it make sense for yeah. me here. Make it make sense for me. You know? Yeah. And and you know what? So and I want to ask both of you this question here. Since you've which I'm pretty sure, of course, you know, big money. I know with you, you already the answer is already prevalent, uh, 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 there for you. But you know, Osiris, I'm pretty sure the answer is the same too. You guys have big success or had success prior to being incarcerated, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. right? What are your thoughts about the system now that you've been through it? Now, do you think it's it's because 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 but because and the reason why I asked them because we've been in the chain gang. And I tell this to everybody. Prison is a necessary evil because there is some people in there that should be in there. Mm -hmm. Not everybody. Not all of us have came out. Not everybody is cut from the same cloth as us where we go out and actually during that time, we use that time to set a stage to make something positive for when we get out to not go back in. There's people actually that's in there. They have no choice or they really have the mindset of, man, I'm just going to do this to get out and just come back right back in yeah, again, right? Yeah. So what is your thought process of prison? Do you think it's just, uh, you know, like the military, like it's the military industrial complex, there's the prison industrial complex, it's just a system to just keep funneling people back into prison, this mass incarceration? What's your thoughts about Good question, the by the system? way. I actually think that it's, it's a business, and mm. there's a business of prison. It, it makes money, it makes a profit. And some of these government officials making a profit off of incarcerating people. And that's slavery. You know what I'm saying? That should be illegal. It shouldn't be allowed. But it's in the Constitution that says that that's you crazy, have though. the right to imprison somebody if they owe you money or anything like that. But right? slavery was outlawed years ago, but there's still forms of it going on nowadays. But go ahead. Jeff. Yeah, that, need, that needs to be removed. But you can't remove it until you start getting our people to go out and vote. And then once they start voting, then they can change laws and they can rewrite all the wrongs that have been done in America. But America is a is a capitalist country. It's built for to make money. Period. Period. And period. Amen. Once you understand right. that, man, maybe maybe our culture, maybe we can leave this motherfucker and go to a country that that will accept respect us that. and respect us. You know what I'm saying? But as far as as far as prison here, man, I, I have a I have a huge problem a, as an adult with. A system that's in place that oppresses African Americans and minorities, Hispanics, um, Asians, whoever. Right? I ain't see a lot of Asians in prison, but, right, but you know, minorities I, I for sure. Minorities for sure. But I, I have a pro- <laughs> yeah. I have a problem with them oppressing us for trying to get out the hood, trying to get out the ghetto, trying to Damn, make that's money. That's crazy because that's what most of us is trying to do is find a way out the hood. Trying to find a way out, trying to provide income for our families, providing, um, opening businesses, becoming entrepreneurs, and providing jobs for other people of, of culture, other people of, of my, that are minorities, right? We creating these opportunities for them. Man, they, you're talking about whether it's your local drug dealer or whatever, right? They in prison for running and operating an illegal business. They should get fined for operating a legal business, not taking the prison. Wow. Right. You, you I should, never thought about it like that, Because really, bro. that's what it is, right? I never Continue thought about criminal it. I enterprise. never had nobody break yeah. it down like that. I mean, America was built on illegal crime, from the Rockefellers the to the Kennedys. The Prohibition and yeah. everything like that, right? Yeah. It's, Slavery. It's, it's, Slavery. Slavery. Right. Right. Mon- monopolizing the, the steel market, anything like that. It's, it's, at some point, somebody create, does something illegal, and then maybe the government comes in and they create a rule against it to stop it from happening. But when you're talking about imprisoning, you know... I, I want to say majority of, of the prisoners in prison are minorities. And mass incarceration. It's mass incarceration of minorities. So it's keeping a thumb on the black community, man. And it's like I see so many kids grow up with no fathers. So many kids grow up you with no mothers. It's women get incarcerated too. It ain't just men. You know what I'm saying? But they take them out the community. Now these kids, they start the cycle. Now these kids have no parents. Now these kids go to the streets. Now these kids, um, they... they Gain love for from a street the gangs nigga. and the streets yeah. from and the everything gangs. like that. So now right. the gangs start raising them. Now they start learning how to survive in the streets. So now you finna penalize them for surviving off the land, which in reality we should be able to survive off the land anyway. But now because that's how it was back in the day in the original days. That's right. how God created it. Cre- right. He created it where you su- can survive off of the land, right? So now 
you make it where these kids turn, go into survival mode and they learn how to survive because they not they don't have the opportunities to become educated because we don't have that that um, foundation in the community. We don't have a place besides the Boys and Girls Club where a kid can go and uh, learn how to build a credit. Uh, they can't learn how to open a bank account and write a check. They don't learn the penalties of bouncing a check or, or the wow. penalties of, of going above 30%. Um, um, debt to income ratio on your credit, which really I don't, I don't like to go above ten percent. You know what I'm saying? But they don't mm. educate they us. They don't on educate that. us. You don't learn that, that right. shit till you a grown man trying to buy a house. After or something. you already right. blew your credit and but everything it's, like that. It's yeah. by design yeah. too, because like that's why that's why I mess with Blue. Listen to the listen to what he's saying. Right, this is a man that obviously been highly successful from a young age. End up get, getting into a mishap. Went did some time. Now he's out. Listen to what he's talking about. Listen to what he's saying, and he's he's only a, what a few months, a few weeks, a few months out of prison. Listen to what he's saying, and he's making more sense than a lot of our politicians, right? A lot of the right, entertainers right, in in, right, in the game now, right, so right. yeah. And then, and then as, a, as a as a as an entertainer, but look, he's talking politics. He's talking what these politicians ain't out here speaking. Mm. We need to vote for big money blue. <laughs> <laughs> we need to vote for man. We big started the campaign blue. campaign listen, right now, man. Straight up, straight up, big man. Straight up, man. Straight up, man. Hey, way, listen, man. man. Hey, send your donations in and everything yeah, like that. You feel me? Yeah, talk. I vote for them all day long, big money. Because that's the thing. See, like, 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 and I wanted to put this out here on wax, right? Right. So when me and Brud jailed, right, I was like, hmm, how this gonna go, right? Because, you know, you're, the man got, yeah, he's, he's a successful person. He ain't really got time for none of this stuff. Right. But to take the time out of his busy schedule and, and, and you know, and devote it to the community to give back, to come and talk about, you know, what's going on in prison, to talk about the young brothers that need guidance, right? It takes a special type of person to put their successful life to the side for a moment, mm. even if it's just for a moment, just to address it. How many other entertainers out here that have been through the system that ain't speaking Truth to power like he is. That's why I, excuse my language, fuck with him. Because that's real. And I appreciate it because he's actually allowing me to share his celebrity status, right? His, his, you know, his, 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 his acclaim. You know what I mean? His fame. To get the message out there. And so the thing is, uh, like, okay, we were just talking about um, mass incarceration, right? right? It's by design. So he talked about credit, right? Because I deal with credit too. He talked about credit and I'm like, yo, I went to school 12 years, ain't nobody mentioned the word credit not one time. Of course not. I never not. even heard not that word. Of course not. Right? Number two, and, that, and that's the number one thing you need to have a successful American lifestyle is credit. It's credit. Right? Absolutely. That's the number one, that's the foundation right, right there. Right. You can't do nothing without that. You can't start a business, you can't buy a house, can't do a, you can't get a car, you can't do nothing without credit. Number two, they don't teach us about the law. Like, how many people, if they knew how much time they would have been sentenced to, right? They would have never done they it. They would have never done Period. it. Period. Yeah, They would have never done it. If you knew you could face an elbow by doing this, you're going to reconsider. You're going to reconsider because you could have went and educated yourself for them same 15 years and became a doctor. Right. And now your whole, you, you just ended the generational curse, you know what I'm saying, that, that was on your family. Now you a doctor. The same 15 years that you just spent in prison. You feel me? Wow. You you just spent that time in jail and you became a law clerk, but you could have been a fucking lawyer. Lawyer, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow! But because it, because our crime it, it 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 hampers you, but that don't mean that you can't stop helping the community. So you still do it, but. It shouldn't be like that. Maybe in another country you could probably still do law. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know. No, that's but a good point. That's a good point. And you know what? You 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 highlighted a good point where, you know, again, the system is meant to really take away just generations and families and everything like that. Especially when it comes to us, you know. I mean, let's keep it real, right? You know, when we we're finally 20, 2023 we're now catching up in the game but we already 400 years behind it like we talked about yeah, absolutely you right. know right. so the system is already against us and everything like that right but one thing i've always said i hate excuses real talk because we all have a dc number we are ex felons right all of us could have went ahead and subscribed to the narrative of Okay, you know what? I've been locked up. Let me go ahead and get a nine to five. Let me go ahead and just, you know, let me lay down and do what I got to do, right? But we all f are, in a way, figuring it out and everything, right? Right? So, do you feel like, do you feel like, although, now don't think about yourself, right? Because, again, we're special. We're a special breed here, right? right. Do you feel like this is almost by design for the masses to be able to go ahead 
and fall by the wayside to be oh, able yeah. to go ahead. Do you feel like this is kind of done on purpose? Yeah, absolutely. What, what you got when you got out of prison? What 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 what, what the, the Florida Department of Correction gave you? A DC number. Besides, I mean, I've been had that, but you, you know, got, outside of that, I mean, you, you got, got your regular EOS package. That's it. Well, fifty dollars in a don't come back to prison. That's anymore. it. You know, like, hope you know we hope. I mean? Some of them will say we'll see you in a few years. Some of them right, say, you right. know, we don't hope we will see you again. But you know, deep down, it really saying we'll yeah. see you again. You ain't prepared. You ain't being prepared for for the streets, right? So right. I served seventeen years, right? Mm -hmm. That's almost half of my life in prison, right? So I I get out of prison. I don't even get the fifty dollars, by the way. But I get out of prison. And I got to make a way for myself after being almost two decades away from and, life, right? From society, as a, right. As a, you know, as a young, as a young black male, right? So now I'm, I'm out, and I have to look out for other brothers and sisters coming out of the system. So I got to do the job that the Florida Department of Correction was supposed to do. I got to do the job that the state was supposed to do, and without any grants. So the money that I get, I got to put it back into my nonprofit. Mm. Everything that I've been doing for the past two years, because I got out May 15, 2020. Everything that I've done with my for-profit businesses right as a consultant right. is I'm, I'm putting it back into the non-profit so when i got with bro he was like nah that ain't right we got to do something about that we got to get your story out there we got to talk about the non-profit we got to talk about what you're doing in the community and he's been getting involved tomorrow tomorrow we have speaking engagement with with some kids right he's teaching, beautiful he's, he's speaking at a, uh, and at at a school right school. if i'm not mistaken yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, absolutely talking to the kids and preventing them from going into the prison system so it's important it's important to to, to, to connect with somebody on the pre-release level That's before you get out right? right And provide the resources to them So that they have plans when they get out So for example my organization When I, I go into all the prisons in South Florida right, State, federal, whatever I go into the half the and federal Educate half and, 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 and talk about just Yeah I, I connect with them I, mot I motivate them number one I encourage them number two Number three I let them know anything they put their minds to They can achieve it right because that's important Look at me I come from where y'all come from I probably did more time than some of y'all in this room today And look I'm successful But here's the, but here's the bigger picture It ain't just about being successful It's about turning around and grabbing the other brother And helping Impacting him Impacting other right? lives We can't right, just talk right. about it We can't just spew the narrative without being involved In the process of what it takes To help us and keep us from going back to prison Leading by example Right, leading by example So that's what I'm doing So for example, when I got with bros Like, well look man, we're giving clothes and shoes We're doing this and that But I like to hire more of our brothers and sisters Coming out the system So we've been fighting for these grants But they ain't paying attention You know, they looking at all the organizations That just talking, they ain't really doing much Of you know, course, of course no names you know, out there, But it is what it is If you know? it's not us, the actual people who've been through the school of hard nights have been through it i mean i mean come on man i mean just legitimate on um, just legitimate black owned businesses and women owned businesses and minority owned businesses is already underfunded and underserved True. what do you think ex felon you know so that um, automatically puts you behind, further behind the eight ball which you know i want to go ahead and switch gears really quick and i know we i want to briefly uh, uh touch on this topic because i know a lot of the viewers are asking about this and i know maybe a little sensitive topic to get you don't want to touch on but you know how how was your your former music career with the with 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 your former group and everything like that are you still you know i know you in prison you say you was working on you work uh working on a book and if i'm not mistaken you told me you even have a project you're working on but you know now that's your future how is your past music career do you still reminisce about it do you still have any futures or desires about it? oh you that's just a part of your life you just uh, I mean, it, it's not a pass, a pass. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, we still touring. I just did two seasons of Loving Hip Hop. That was that's current. We just did the biggest black owned tour in America. Beautiful. Two years back to back, called the Millennium Tour, and then they toured without me while I was in prison and did the Millennium Tour. And also talking about the form, the former group and everything, right? Yeah. It's not a former group. It's my current group. Your current you know group. I'm, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, but is is so it's relevant. You know what I mean? We're the right. biggest group in the urban community. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's just that's just another lane. You know what I'm saying? Right, I'm in, right, I'm in a right. different lane right now at the moment. That's always going to be there. That's a part of my history. It's a part of you know. American culture, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like we, we for black African American young men that came out of you know poverty, young, young Yo. that that young that was able to, to have success, you know what I'm saying, and make it out the hood and be able to take people with us. So it, it's a it's a part of my and, story. And, and you know what I love about you guys because you was on love. Women and everything, not the gang gang, shoot them up and everything like that. You know, but it started there. 
It did? It, yeah, it started. Nah, man, up. I remember, you know what I'm saying? Grind on me. <laughs> that, was, that was the first one that you remember, but it started there. We oh, had to transition okay, okay. to that. That's that's just me understanding business. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, okay. That, okay. When that, that record went across the country and it took the country by wildfire, and then automatically, me not knowing the word at the time, but understanding business concept, we had to scale that. So now it's like, okay, we oh, need to replicate that. So now okay. it went from grind on me to your body to the to your body. Right. Now we're doing RB music and shit like that. Because that's R&B. the business side right there. That's like you said. It's like, okay, we got to make this commercial music to be able to get to where we need to get, right? It wasn't even commercial. At that time, we was really going against what was the popularity and, and what was what was normally played on radio. They didn't like playing that kind of music. It was it, They used to take our records off the radio. It's like, oh, it's too risque. It's too sensual. It's too sexual. Seriously? Yeah. It, this was... At the music that you have today, we paved the way to do that. You know what I'm saying? The same way how Uncle Luke paved the way for... With, with right, the, the, the booty, booty shaking, shaking and all yeah. that. Yeah, when Pretty Ricky came out, there was no... The, you couldn't say the stuff that, that we say on them records. You know what I'm saying? Oh. What, what my lyrics is on ground on me. Let me see. I hit him. I make him say, ah, sex be my day job. I hit him in the back of my car, ride it like a seesaw. Some shit like that. All, it's all sexual. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, I see what the point you're making at. Yeah, yeah. So you really, that was taboo back in the day. That was taboo. It was Christian. It's a Christian coalition. It's a Christian belt of stations. They don't, they didn't, at the time, they didn't play oh. no, no music that wasn't, you know, Charlie Wilson type. Right, nice. right. You couldn't play. You couldn't play no R and B music that had no rap with it, and it, and we cussing, and, y'all and we young t- too. And you talk about sex, yeah. and I'm talking about sex with metaphors and shit. I'm talking about eat, man. I I eat it, eat the cake, but I lick off the icing. Like they yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. Okay. So that we we paid a way for artists like that to be able to do that. To now you got artists where everybody rap and sing. You know what I'm saying? The that, Drake, the Nicki, yeah, that the, a, a whole new Drake era, pretty yeah. much, right? Yeah, right, yeah. Paved the way. M- music has changed now. You know what I'm saying? But it, I, I want to touch on something though. You feel what I'm saying? Just being young, just trying to make it out the hood. I want to commend. You know what I mean? Our black culture also, because everything ain't all bad. From yes. from pain and from hardship and from struggle. You know what I'm saying? You do get roses that grow out of concrete. You do get people Big who facts, who are resilient, yeah. who find yeah, a way. I like and price. I I see now that you know. And, and and one more thing before I say what I'm gonna say. Go ahead. Is the the biggest tool and weapon that was used against us is taking information from us. Oh, putting it in Ooh. books and not allowing us to read them, or, high, or burning books. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Taking man. they taking education out the school system. If it's a Ooh. book that tells you that, hey man, a black man really invented heart surgery. A black man talk. really invented power. Man, they take them books out the out, out the, the system, school system, yeah. right? So they right. take the education from us. Speed. But we're in an information era now where. African it's so Americans. readily available now. You can get information right now on the cell phone or anything like that. Yeah. Right. So now these kids, they got access to information. Mm-hmm. They educating mm-hmm. themselves. And now I see so many millionaires from e-commerce opening their own businesses selling, whether they selling their own line of soap or selling their own line of candles or selling their own line of body. body. I mean, I, one of my friends, man, opened a makeup company. She made a million dollars in a day. A million in a day. Man, gotta, say that again. Hold on, a, man. Hold on. Yeah. A million in a day. One man. Man, in a couple hours. That's one friend. I got another friend. Got a got a, a headline. Her name BB Judy. Got miracle miracle drops. Millionaire. She dating the brat now. You know what I'm saying? Our African American community, the minorities, we find a way. Right. And e-commerce. I don't know. I know this is a, a, a money, big money talk. This is a money business. You already <laughs> Hey, the blueprint, e-commerce, man. When you That's see up. all these dudes online saying they made millions on Amazon and they're making millions with Shopify, that shit real. Make make I that like money. That. Now, and you know what? Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Y'all playing, man. 2024. Vote for big money blue, man. Man, y'all listen, playing, man. man. Hey, hey playing, we started man. a campaign y'all right playing, now, man. man. Vote hey, man, you feel money me? Blue, if you won't change, Big man. Money Blue, I'm his running mate. I'm his running mate. Yeah, I'm letting you know now. Yeah, 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 yeah. you feel me? We got the organizer machine already ready. You, you know, me? Amendment 4 got passed. All is 2.2 million returning citizens in the state of Florida that are eligible to vote with backgrounds. Let's do it. Let's get this man here, commissioner, mayor, the governor, and then maybe even... The White House. Oh, snap. Hold on, it. man. Hold I on. Think, I think Move before, over, Kanye. I think before I could vote, we gotta clean we gotta clean up my image because the 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 government they went hard trying to destroy my reputation. 
Word. And it, yeah, man, you got to think about it, man. Everything in life is all about incentive, right? Right. These people got jobs. They want to be the biggest at their job. They want to walk sense. around. Oh, the they office. want to be the accolades, the pat on the back. They and want everything. the accolades and the pat on the back. Yeah. So, so basically, I was I was made a scapegoat in this in this the case that I was in mm-hmm. because I got the bigger name. I, I made headlines. I'm on every every news outlet. I'm on every blog. So man, they seen that man. They putting them press releases out. The P- Department of Justice press release. Boom. Back to back to back. You see what I'm saying? Right. And they just really tried to assassinate my character. But in reality, man, I was a victim. You know what I'm saying? I'm a I was a victim, man. I just made what I made. I made a quarter million dollars selling face masks, KN95 masks when the pandemic hit. You feel what I'm saying? A quarter million, bro, in less than thirty days. Uh, you see what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm that's the hustler mentality out yeah. of you. What's wrong with that, man? That that ain't where the problem came. The problem came. Okay, I'm I'm basically consulting a football agency. You know uh. what I'm saying? The football agency loans money to the players during the off season. So when it's an off season, they might they might need a million dollars. They'll tell the agency, "Hey man, I need a meal real quick." They'll say, "All right, we'll give you a million. You got to give us one point two, one point three back." Right. Right. Okay. So they loan the money to the football players. I'm witnessing this. I'm 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 consulting the agency. You know what I'm saying? At, for doing a the transaction. Label. They doing a record label. So I'm consulting them, but I'm I'm paying attention to everything that's going on. Right. You okay. You see what I'm saying? So now, when I when when the pandemic hit, you feel me? I'm. I'm talking to my manufacturer in China. My manufacturer is like, yo, Blue, is you selling face masks? I'm like, nah, nigga, for what? He's like, yo, there's a virus in China that's killing everybody. So this is before it, the, uh, the virus touched down Bef- over here. Before the virus touched down. Okay. My manufacturer say, there's a virus in China. It's called the coronavirus. It's like airborne AIDS. They dying instantly. He starts sending me videos. He's like, it's in China. It's in Wuhan, killing everybody. Whoa. This is months before. So you up on game before everybody else is up on game. I'm up on game, but nigga, I'm so high in the clouds, bro. I ain't even like, I'm like. Yeah, you're like, whatever. I'm like, yeah, man. I'm like, whatever, man. I'm like, what's up, what's up with my order for my inventory? <laughs> he's like, he's like, I'm going to send your order, Blue. You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So he sent the order. When the first news hit that the coronavirus just hit America and Not somebody you. died instantly, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm gonna hit him back. Hey yo, you still got the mask? <laughs> How you said it? Hey, hey, hey yo, you still got the mask? Just like <laughs> he say, he say, he say, I got a whole mask factory now, Damn. right? So he's like, I'm like, give me by the end of the night, I'm gonna build out a whole website. We gonna sell these masks. So I build out the website. I launched the website. I, I this is in one night and conversation. What? Build a website. Yeah, I'm like that. So I build a website. By the end of the night, website built. I hit the dude. I say, yo, it's done. You ready? I say, you sure you can feel all the oil? He said, I can feel every order. So now we're going to do drop shipping, right? I say, in the morning, I'm going to run the ad. I run the ad. Boom, click, click. I click, um, launch. I launch it. Buy my advertisement. Man, I made 30-something thousand in like 20 minutes. Boom. <sighs> feel what I'm saying? Instant. Bro, that's let... That's more than a thousand dollars a minute you was yeah. making. Man, I, man, I, I made the money. It was, it was crazy. I'm gonna show you pictures too. I, I what? Screwed, yeah, cause I wanted to document this shit. It was so unbelievable, right? So I make, I make the money, and then I tell him, I say, um, I say, no, the government, the government hit me. They mm-hmm. like, oh, you price gouging. It's a pandemic. I say, what the f- a pandemic? <laughs> oh, because yeah. oh, that is the first time we ever heard that right now. Yeah. What the hell is that? Yeah. Like, I don't even know what a pandemic is, bro. So they tell me you price gouging. It's a pandemic. This is this is a, a world disaster, right? So, okay, I get. Let me see. Look like that. Look, let's say today. See, I say today. That's thirty four thousand, right? Feel me? Hey, I, I'm it's watching this with my own eyes, guys. He ain't it, capping now. Real talk. It, now look. Yeah. Okay. So now, boom. So now. This this the month. That wasn't the whole month though, but that, that's just a screenshot that I took at the time. Feel me? What'd that say? It said April thirteenth to like April thirtieth or something, April twentieth. How much money is say? Damn, one hundred twelve thousand. Damn, that's thirty three. One hundred twelve thousand dollars, man. Okay, that and this this is before the end. That's that's twenty six hundred orders, right? Damn, hold on. How much that say? Hundred almost two hundred bands. You feel me? That's that's Hold an on. e-commerce guru. Look, look right what it there, say. Man. Look, look at what's the product at the bottom. These product. 
KN95 mask, KN95 mask with valve. God. You understand me? Off straight mask. Straight mask. Straight mask. Look, hold on for a second. 200000 almost $200,000 off of mask. Off mask. Goodness. So, look, look at this video. Them the orders coming in. It's still going. Yeah. <laughs> hold on, that's the point. Yeah, it's not it's stopping. Not, it's not stopping. Them the orders. Now, what it say, though? Boom, Shopify, boom, boom, boom. Shopify. That's the that's the meal ticket. But check it. So now I just made a quarter million with these fucking mad. So now this dude called me. I'm literally at the dealership trying to buy a sprinter van for the Millennium Tour, right? President don't want to go on tour buses. I'm like, I'm gonna get sprinters. So I'm at the tour, I'm at the um spot buying the sprinters. The dude called me while while I'm buying the sprinters. I'm arguing with my girl on the phone and shit. I'm like, yo, I'm buying a sprinter. He's like, no. No, this, you know, he's loud, charismatic guy. No, don't use your money, Blue. Like, we'll just do it through the through the agency. Don't use your oh. money. Keep keep your money. I say, man, I say y'all could be um selling gloves and hand sanitizer. You see what I'm saying? I'll make you a website, do that. Oh, man, yeah, let's do it. This, don't use your money. Use use our money. All right, man. I'm, all right, I'm going to leave from over here. So I go home. Right. Go to sleep. Phone ring. Hey, you still need that? That um funding, yeah, hell yeah. Let's go, yeah. I need to. I got to buy the sprinter van. We about to go on tour. He say, give me, give me, give me to the morning. Send me your ID and all that shit. I send the shit. Bam. I wake up in the morning, four hundred thousand. Ooh wee, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's for real. It's for I'm dead ass shit. Yeah, uh-huh. So now I'm like, okay, we go. I think I let me see. I get I get the four hundred thousand. He tell me he want to meet up or whatever. I'm like, man, what I got to give you for this 400000 You know, in the music business, we give you 10. I know you give it. You charge them niggas Alfred, 20, yeah, 30% yeah, yeah, yeah. on the money. You charging them 20 to 30. I say, what I got to give you, man? You know, music industry, 10%. He say, oh, he want 30%. I say, who want 30%? He say, the dude who did all your stuff for the agency, man. We put you straight in. We ain't even, we just put it in. Blue, we ain't even do nothing. We just put you in. Look, He called me on FaceTime. He say, look, look at the computer screen. We approved you. We put you straight in. Whoa. So I'm thinking the money coming from the agency. It's coming from them the whole time. Man, I still don't know. I'm still oblivious. He tell me, yeah, come and meet the guy. When I go meet the guy, the guy say, I say, man, I, I'm trying to buy this blue Lamborghini and put COVID-19 on the license plate. Nigga, I just made another 100000 <laughs> Feel me? He say, no, nah, I don't use your money. Man, let me let me be your financial advisor, shit, man. You know I work for the billionaire. We'll do it. I set you up with this, whatever, whatever you do it through your LLC. We'll do your business thing. You can write it off in taxes. Do it through Nevada. You could. You won't pay no sales tax. We'll, They're we'll, giving we'll, you all the game. game. I'm, yeah, 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 I'm like, all right, man. Shit, that shit sound right. Right, right, I go, right. I go home the next day. I wake up seven hundred more thousand. Damn. Wait, hold up. <laughs> I'm dead ass serious, dog. Well, they dropping it. Man, what? They dropping it. Drop it. Man, 700,000, 400,000, 1. point something million. I get a nigga 250,000, right? So now I give him 250. I go hit the road and shit. When I go hit I say, all right, we ain't going to buy the sprinters yet. We finna go and hit the road. We go do a weekend. I think we do. I think we do Madison Square Gardens. Right. Feel me? We go do the Millennium Tour, Madison Square, Square Gardens. They shut the whole country down. They say no more, no more tour dates. No more tours or nothing. Tours is over. No more tour dates. So now I go back home. You feel what I'm saying? I go back home uh, and I go and see my accountant. I'm like, yo, I, I got to, you know, move you know, move money around, pay everybody out, whatever. The tour is over and shit. You know what I'm saying? I want to make sure everybody, you know, scrape. He said, well, what's this big chunk right here that's missing? It's like 250000 I said, oh, that was the guy who did all the pay. You know, that's like it. That was his percentage. He said, he can't do that. That's illegal. <laughs> I said, I say, what? <laughs> he said, that's illegal. I'm calling your lawyer right now. <laughs> Yo, he called my lawyer right now, right then on the spot, nigga, and that and that was a rap. Next thing you know, nigga, I'm looking at the motherfucking papers, nigga. My account in the paperwork, bitch. I'm getting indicted. Like that. Bam. Damn. Man, I'm like, what the f and, and then everything went from and there. And then it just started unraveled after that. And started then unraveling right from there, goddammit. That's crazy. Yeah. So you intro- you was introduced to a play. You an opportunist like all of us say, okay, let me take advantage of it. But you end up getting the shitty end of the stick when it's all said and done. Yeah, because I didn't ask the question. So what I learned from uh, doing this time in prison in this situation was, first of all, make sure you ask the right questions and, and make sure you validate a person. Make sure you verify them. No Go- matter Google what. them. If yeah. I would have Googled that motherfucker, I would have seen this nigga had a whole fucking rap sheet history, of bullshit. Rap sheet of bullshit. One of my friends on one of the biggest blogs in America, she's like, oh, man, he tried to hit me too, but I Googled him. I say, damn. Man. 
I say, damn. Yeah, 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 that hit you right there. That hit me right there because <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ain't Googling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what I was saying. Do yeah. the research. Do the research, front, right. So you don't have to you don't feel the, the You don't have to backtrack back and the, do some of the stuff yeah, that you went through. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I still kept it solid. I still ain't snitch on a nigga or nothing. That nigga snitched on me. This nigga tried to do a wide tap on me. He did a wide tap, not try. The nigga did a wide tap. So, Blue, who's your lawyer? Who's your accountant? Where you put the money at? What you did with the... This shit in the wide tap in my discovery, bro. This nigga, this nigga tried to case me up, pin the whole shit on me. Because, obviously, he, you know, they was trying to case him up, so they trying to get the other fishes that he's trying to uh, involved with. You don't remember in the movie when Nino Brown was like, I ain't never liked that light-skinned nigga anyway. Yeah. He, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Nino uh, Brown was like, Hey, hold on, man. We got some light skinned brothers up in here, man. Feeling some type of way, right? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, that that nigga really threw me under the bus, my nigga. And I'm like, yo, all you had to do was keep it a buck. If he would have just told the truth and was like, me, you had a, some football players that was involved. Right. If he would have just said the truth and say, and not did, buckle on the pressure, pretty much. Man, he was trying to get himself out of prison. You know what I'm saying? He trying yeah. to get time cut off. But if he would have just say, man, them guys didn't do, they didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Just be honest. They weren't finna change your time. You could have been honest and say they didn't know. I, I basically manipulated the situation. I didn't get them all the information. I told them that it was this. Because everything that we let them know, it was like, hey, man, we ain't know what was We don't know on. jack shit. Man, they was like, everybody saying the same thing. But we still got to charge y'all anyway because it's a conspiracy. Because they want somebody. Yeah, if it's everybody's, It's like when they pull a car over, everybody say, oh, the drugs ain't mine. Okay, all y'all going in yeah, until yeah. somebody say something. At, right. the, at the time, because this is the beginning of the PPP shit, they don't know... They don't. They don't know how people. How they doing it? They don't uh, know how it's doing. The it, government what's didn't even know about the program. They just rolled it out at that point, right? Man, my lawyers ain't even know. They didn't even know how to protect us. They like we don't understand the language. They they put this together, and, and nobody should have done this without a lawyer because it, you make any any mistake in the paperwork, and you you susceptible to Get incarceration. It right. Yeah, it should it shouldn't have been done because it wasn't for us. This was for. Motherfuckers that own Fortune 500 and that's companies. that's the crazy part, you know, because you at that point, and that's a very important point, you know, which uh, 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 before we wrap up the show is that they locked us in the country. They locked us down, everybody, right? They locked us all down and everything like that. And we were already, quote, unquote, fucked up before the pandemic. Now you have this pandemic. And you really give us nothing? I mean, don't, of course, there's stimulus checks. And of course, we had that, that and everything that like that. that. But come on, man. What is an extra $600 going to do to sub to, to people in, 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 in the low-income communities that you say, oh, stay indoors, you can't go to work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not only you have to stay indoors and go to work, you can't go to daycare, you can't go to the gym, you can't go touring, you can't do this. You got to just sit there, look at each other. That's why suicides, divorces, what has an all-time high and everything like that, especially in our community and everything, right? So I want to wrap up the show as... You know, first of all, I want to say it's been a very, very, very dope conversation. Not, you know, very enlightening, you know. And if there's one thing that you could share with the audience and the viewers as, as far as what it would take to build their blueprint. And I want to hear from both of you, each of your okay. viewpoints, right? Mm -hmm. And But I want to hear from your experience. I want to hear from you, right, big money and aspect of somebody who, like I said, you were on top of the mountain at one point took a very hard fall to grace. Now you came back up. You found your way in another path, successful in a whole nother lane. You know, what is your blueprint to success? And, of course, Osiris, you mm -hmm. spending almost two decades in the prison right. and now turning your whole life around and putting your foref the forefront in helping others, particularly in our community, to help others. What is you, the one blueprint that you could share with everybody? I'm going to start with you, Baby Blue. Okay. Um, the, the, this is like... Uh, this is like guaranteed going to work for you. <laughs> okay. They're, and, not, they're definitely tuned in. They say you start <laughs> off like that, for this, real. This guarantee that it's going to work for you is, is proven. I live my life by this. I'm a living testimony. You're talking about a young hood black nigga who... Daddy went to prison and all. You know what I'm saying? I right. came up straight from the hood. Um, this is this is what you got to do. First of all, you got to have a belief in a higher power. Whatever wow. your higher power wow. is, you got to have a belief in a higher power that somebody is going to create a way for you, right? Then you now you add that belief in a higher power to you 
taking the time in a quiet place to know exactly what you want to do. You need to know exactly what makes you tick, what makes you happy. So now once you find that thing that makes you happy, when you start de dedicating your life to doing this thing, you'll never work in your life. All you finna what? be doing is enjoying yourself because you're doing something that you love to do. So yeah, that's damn. Yeah. I usually yeah, tell people profound. find your pet, do something that you would rock do for, for uh, if you take money away from it, you'll do it for free. You'll do it for free. You know what I'm same, saying? Same and you premise. Just emphasize that in a whole another point of view right there. I Sa like that. Same premise. So now you find this thing that you would do for free. You find this thing that that you love to do, and you dedicate your life to mastering that craft. You even if you got to find a mentor, be an apprentice of someone. You dedicate your life to being a master of that. Once you become a master and you got the hours in and you make it your own, you put your own spin to it. You, you're a human being. Every human going to do things their own way. You make it your own. You, you make it proprietary. Now uh, it's, it's you own the process. Right? Intellectual property is yours. Right? It's yours because you own that process of whatever it is that you're developing. You, on, along the way, when you're, when you're learning something, you're going to see problems in it. You're going to say, dang, this is a problem that needs a solution. You create that solution or you solve that problem. But back back to the, 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 the stuff that you really need to know. Okay. When you figure out what you want to do, you're going to write that down on a piece of paper. Okay. And you're going to write down every goal that you want to accomplish on a piece of paper or a book. You go, you can have a notebook of every goal you want to do. Okay. Right. You're going to write down every goal and number them. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. Each goal, you're numbering them. And you're going to write down a task. That it every task that it takes to complete the goal. Okay, I gotta do this. Goal I gotta do this. Okay. Goal and task. Okay. Each task that you gotta complete. Now the people say put the do the goal and put a date next to it. But the, I mean, you should, but at the same time, you don't know how long it's gonna take you to complete to that, that goal. Right. You feel yeah. me? So it's kinda like whatever. It's a reason they saying put a date next to it. I ain't figured that out yet. But <laughs> I I do the goal and I do the itemized list task list. So now when I have that task list every single day. That I wake up, I'm going to do something on the task list. To get to that goal. To get to the goal. Next, ta every day, this task, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. It might take 10 days, but that task complete. Next task. Wow. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Task complete. Next task. And I'm going to keep doing it till that goal is complete. And I'm going to keep doing that till every goal is complete. So now, eventually, I'm going to be the place that I envisioned. That goal that I envisioned, that person that I wanted to be, that I drew out in my mind, that I that I put on a wall, and I was like, I want to be this exact person that do look like this, talk like this, act like this, whatever. I want to do this for a living. I want to own this. I want to whatever. I wrote everything down, mm. and I and every single day, bro. I'm talking about Boom. passionately, Boom. passionately. Boom. The key to to accomplishing goals is passion, resilience. You feel what I'm saying? That higher that belief in that higher, higher power, power to yeah. know that okay, somebody's gonna help me accomplish these goals. I'm not gonna give up. That that belief could it ain't even gotta be a religious or spiritual belief. It can be I just wanna get my kids out the motherfucking ghetto. That is true. Oh, that could, yeah, that, it could be it That's could be just as goal, that. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It could be as simple as that. You need to have something that you're working hard for. And you need to be charismatic. You need to be a believer in your goal and your dreams. So now you can attract other like-minded people who want to help you achieve your goal because every person doesn't want to be a leader. Some people want great people to follow. Some people want to well, be a part true. of a vision. <laughs> Feel me? That every, is true, right. Everybody might not have a grand vision. Some people just want to show up to work and do they part of, of the... Part of the, of the vision. Part of the vision, and that satisfies them. And you want to you wanna be clear... And have clarity in your vision. So now other people who have like like minded thoughts will attract to you and help you accomplish your goals. Cause you can't do it by yourself. You gotta have a team. You gotta create a team. You gotta treat everybody good. You wanna pay everybody. You know what I'm saying? And you eat together. Everybody eat together. Man, you do that and you work every single day. Every dream, every goal that you got, you will accomplish one by one. And I guarantee this. I I swear on this. Every goal. The right. biggest thing you could do is if it's in your mind and you're, an imag you're imagining it, write it down. Now it's a reality. You just took it out of your mind and you made it physical because you put it on a piece of paper. That's the first step. 
You know what I'm saying? You know how many ideas you have at night before you go to sleep or when you first wake up that you never see into fruition because you didn't write you it down. You never write it down. You completely forgot about you it. Forgot. Or, mm. You know, you thought of pink. Now when you wake up, it's blue. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Write you know, it down and act on it, man. You know what? That and I've asked a lot of people that question. That is the most profound, not only the most profound and intense answer that I've gotten, but a lot of viewers will probably respond to this, you know, that hits directly to the mark in the aspect of, you know, that is a true blueprint. That is a true roadmap, right? Believing in that higher power. And the, the name. And actually. The name on the know. top of that blueprint, we're going to put work ethic. You can't get a lot of that. And that's a lost start right there. Sacrifice. That's a lost yeah. start. In this microwavable yeah. society that yeah. we're in right now, that people think that success can just be overnight. I mean, we heard your story now because we're different. We come from a different cough, but... Work ethic is another prerequisite that a lot of people just don't have inside of them. Work, I agree with work you. ethic, sacrifice, and resilience. Never giving up. The mm. day that you give up, the day that you motherfucking it's over with it. baked chicken. And you know don't what? give up. I was thinking about something while you were talking, uh, Blue. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I saw on social media you were saying that you you write. You know, you you need a name for the book, right? A title. Yeah. I think the title should be the blueprint. Blueprint, huh? Ooh, the blueprint. Oh, God. Now, hold on. I thought the blueprint. Fire. I like that. Fire, right? I thought about it. I blueprint. like that. I like I think that. That's what it should be because you expound a lot of profound principles and ideas and concepts that not only you as a successful person have, um, you know, can connect with. But other people, the, you know, what they call the layman, the the, the average person, the right. nine to five worker, uh, the guy that's writing rhymes, you know, envisioning to be as successful as you as you are. You know, and anybody and everybody can apply those principles. So what you're what you're laying down in, in, in the book and what you're talking about today is the blueprint, literally the blue, the blueprint. Print. Right. Yeah, I like yeah. that. I like that. Which that's let's segue to your your your. Uh, uh, Piece of advice, what's your key blueprint secret you would share with everybody based upon your experience? It's, it's, it's definitely multifaceted, but I would say this. Um, it's time, right? Time management. So prison taught me a lot about time because that's all I had. Respect know? it. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 21 years old. I'm going in. I got to do a 20-year sentence. That's time. So uh, I started realizing that. What you do with your time determine how successful you're going to be, no matter what it is, right? Some people are successful at doing evil. You could be successful at doing good, right? Damn. So, yeah, because it's all right, success, yeah. right? You got some dudes, they just they just habitually successful at doing wrong. Doing bad. Right, right. doing bad or doing wrong. So Or successful at failing, right? So And to them, it's, it's a success. They happy with it. They ain't got a problem with failing. But right. So prison taught me. To, to properly manage my time People who mismanage time Are those that never see a goal or a plan Or a dream coming to fruition So, you know, while I, while I was in there I started reading and studying And I got with a lot of brothers um, And in fact, because of the way I perceived time I was able to manage hundreds of hundreds of the younger brothers and older actually older brothers because i was the young i started a spiritual group in prison i was the first and the only black man to do it in the florida department of corrections and so i had brothers that were uh you know my granddaddy age you know that i was i was over you know and so being over and and, and the group still exists today and when i go back into the prisons i actually meet them brothers and shout out to them brothers at south bay correctional facility too, south man. bay like okay brothers, okay man, see all them places, one of the Everglades. few private prisons you know in I mean? south florida yeah, you know yeah. you get some of that extracurricular yeah, stuff yeah. we ain't gonna talk and about that, that. So that's how, cause that was a private <laughs> camp it allowed me to properly manage my time so the studying and, and everything like that so managing brothers it taught me how to be a leader out here mm. how to be a boss out here right mm. so um, you know, managing all the brothers and getting used to and learning the different character traits and the different personalities and how to make people happy. And even those that start confrontation within the organization, they have a place too. you know what I mean? Mm. You just don't you don't put them out of the, the organization because they 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 become disgruntled members and them the ones that take your organization down. So there's a place for everybody. Deal you know? with them accordingly. Yeah, you deal with them accordingly. You put them where he's fit. Right. Where he see himself fit. Right. But so that time management is, is the reason why. 
are, I haven't worked for anybody since I've been out since May 15, 2020. I have never made less than $50 an hour. Right now, I get paid at least $125 an hour. And so building something that never existed. There's a lot of things that I've accomplished in my short period of time being out. And I've accomplished most of the th things I've done. I've done it within my first year of release. Beautiful. Right. Beautiful. And so I own multiple companies. And it's because I manage my time. If I sit and watch three hours of TV, that's three hours less of sleep that I got to get. You understand? Because you got to put that time back. And there's multiple understanding time from a spiritual perspective. Time exists. All right. If you look at the YouTube timeline, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's actually two, two dots on that timeline. One is the red dot, the one is the white dot, right? Mm -hmm. if, if sometimes the red dot moves slower, most of the time the red dot is, is behind the white dot, right? right? So it's multiple timelines on one, line, on one timeline, right? So what you do, what, you might have a goal like, okay, today at 6 o'clock I'm going to work out, 6 o'clock in the morning, right? right? But so you stop, you take a phone call. That 6 o'clock, 6.15, 6.30, it's still running, even though you you stationary, you ain't working out. So now what you got to do is now seven o'clock uh, come, you hang the phone up, boom, you your workout supposed to be done already. So now what you got to do, you got to go to eight o'clock now, right? So what you have to do is you got to compensate for that. You got to put that time back on the back end. Right. So now instead of sleeping eight hours, you got to sleep seven hours or six hours just to put that time back. So most successful tell you that like, there's a there's a thing I'm gonna say this I'm gonna. I'm going to back up because I think it's a lot to digest. They say, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, um, uh, I think it's Bill Gates, but they say that the, 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 if he drop $100 on the ground, Warren Buffett, I think they say Warren Buffett so rich, if he drop $100 on the ground, it costs him more money to pick it up than to walk forward. Because the time it would take for him to turn around, walk back, he's losing down money. Pit, he's losing money. Yeah. And I see why that statement is so true. It's because the time it would take for me to argue with somebody about something that I know to be the truth is costing me time because time is money. So you don't have time to argue with somebody. You just show them. You ain't got to convince nobody. If you got to convince somebody to do something that they claim they want to do, it's a waste of time. And one thing we don't do is waste, waste time. time. In the chain game, dudes used to call. People call. I used to tell guys, man, I don't care what you call me. You know, they say, oh, uh, F F N. you know, the you know, the yeah, F N word. Yeah, you know, what's up? Oh, yeah, what's up? All that I good just stuff, be like, yeah. it's, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. It don't matter what you call me. It's how you treat me. And the worst thing you could do to me, but well, I'm be ready to fight. I'm a humble brother, but I be ready to fight if you waste my time. Because time Ooh, I can't get it's back. precious, yeah. Yeah, I can get it's back them precious. soups. I can get back the Jack Mac, friends, loved ones, money. You can get that, get that back. Time. time you can't, brother. So learn how to manage time so you don't mismanage it. Because if you mismanage time, you mismanage your career. You mismanage time, you mismanage your business. You mismanage time, you mismanage your life. That's what's up. You know what? And for a lot of the viewers out there, you know, I could definitely relate to both points that you guys shared. You know, obviously losing a lot of time like you, not as much, but of course, you know, almost a decade. And also putting your plan on paper, you know what I'm saying? And I put in that itemized, like you say, putting a task, attaching it to a goal. You know, these are all prerequisites in building the blueprint. And I just want to follow up by saying is, you know, one thing is, if I uh, and I want you guys, if you could agree with me on this, you know, believing in yourself because a lot of people mm. that's the key thing, they just don't believe in themselves, right? You'll be impacted or influenced by a person, place, a thing, and that's easy nowadays in this, you know, in this world that we're living in is that a lot of people, you know, despite their age, still even don't know what their true purpose is in life, right? So when you believe in self, that automatically, you know, plants the seeds for the two two philosophies and the two points that you guys just made, right? Because once you have that ultimate confidence, you're going to respect time. Once sure. you have that ultimate confidence, your vision is clear where you now, you're able to put it down on paper and you can be able to hit these goals, right? You know, so I'm definitely excited to be able to have you brothers come on and share your points, you know, and uh, I know the audience definitely was able to win off this conversation here. And I just want to ask, can I get you brothers to come back again, man? Absolutely. Oh man, that's what's up, man. See, that's a real recognized, real. You know what? I, if there's anybody, I was gonna say, yeah, I know these two, man. They've been in the chain gang with me, yeah, man. Yeah, we yeah, all got yeah. DC numbers, man. Say, so say they, what you mean, mean what you say. You feel you know, me? That's, that's what I'm that's talking a, that's about. That's the chain gang principle. Say what you mean and mean, mean what, what you say. say. Or get fucked up along the way if you don't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, 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 right. 
experience, brother. It's but a good experience, brother. You feel nonetheless, but yeah. before we wrap up today's show, Big Money, if you could go ahead and let everybody know any special projects, any, you know, thing you got coming down the pipeline in 2023, 2024, go ahead and let everybody know. And of course, we're going to wrap it up with letting everybody know where they can follow you, your social media handles and everything like that. Yeah, man. Basically, the only thing I'm focused on right now is my first day out record. You feel mm. me? You can play that right there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Oh, oh, is that something we hear right? Oh, okay. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely yeah. check out Big Money Blue. That's big true. Money Blue. Okay. I went ahead and surrendered. You know, you know this blueprint shit. I'm the big dog when it comes <laughs> right here. But I'm going to surrender it to the other Big Money Blue right here. You feel me? So I got to surrender to it. You feel me? So definitely check them out, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you can check them out on all streaming platforms, all uh, social media at Big Money Blue. Big Money Blue Instagram, Facebook, and also you can follow Osiris on all uh, social media platforms at R E E N T R Y O N E Reentry One Inc. You can follow us, see what we're doing in the community. You're gonna see Big Bruh snapping pretty soon when we post them pics and them videos and what he's doing in the community, cause that's the real one. Like I said, y'all plan. Big money blue for 2024. Big money. That's what I'm y'all talking go about. Out hey. and vote, man. Hey, I man. Hey, make, sure, make sure if y'all want to send a donation, DM Blueprint, because I'm his campaign manager, <laughs> running mate, all that. Duh. I need a Real little talk. You know. Speak it into existence, me? man. You Speak feel me? It hey, go, to, go to bigmoneyblue.com, man. Check out my YouTube channel, man. That's like, what's I'm doc- up. I'm documenting the whole process, man. That's what's up. And you know yeah. what, ladies and gentlemen, again, you guys was able to win with this conversation because not only was you able to hear, again, two extraordinary blueprints but also you was able to hear you know what it takes to build your blueprint from again lenses of individuals who went through the struggle and everything like that so definitely had a great time listen you could catch all previous episodes at respectmyblueprint.com or you can check us out on all streaming platforms whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Amazon all that other good shit you already know and of course you can catch me at all social media at Blueprint Mastermind and as always what we gonna do Catch y'all on the flip side. Peace. Peace. Hey, shout out to our sponsor, Uptrend Credit. Listen, if you're having a hard time understanding how credit works or you want a better understanding of how to boost your credit, you definitely want to check out Uptrend Credit on learning how to leverage your credit to hit your goals. Now, Uptrend Credit is an easy-to-use credit monitoring platform that's utilized to help close the wealth gap with the right resources in helping you doing so. So definitely check out UptrendCredit.com to see how you can help stay on top of your financial goals. Now, let's get back to the video. This conversation about building up your blueprint It's time to take it cause time is wasted Go grind and chase it, don't lose it This generation need integration with information to move with An inclination that is abiding and entertaining improvement